Hello and welcome! We are playing Standard! Yes, finally we're playing some Standard again. And I'm playing the deck that perhaps is playing the most new cards? I mean, at least of the top decks, I would guess so, to really, you know, get a grasp on this format. It, it has changed a lot. We have Deep Cavern Bat, Subterranean Schooner, Spyglaze Siren, and Preacher of the Schism, as well as the Restless Reef, all from Ixalan. When you would think that with Standard being so big that, you know, will a new set really make much of an impact? Ixalan really proved us wrong there. Uh, or at least me, who thought like, oh, we'll maybe see a couple of new cards here and there from new Standard, but Standard's so powerful, there won't be much new. But yeah, no, Ixalan up the power level even more. Really powerful format for Standard. Um, Great one drop here with Spyglass Saren, uh, very reminiscent of the Frame Inspector. And of course, synergizes, synergizes very nicely with the Subterranean and Schooner, which wants you to have small creatures that, if they have evasion, grow, and then those small creatures turn into bigger creatures. With evasion, Spyglass Saren will deal more damage, and so on and so on. So, a nice combination there. E Cavern Bat, another 1 1 flyer, um, looks at the opponent's hand and takes the card. I mean, this is an absolute staple of standard now. Every Black Midrange deck seems to be running this one. Um, yeah, it turns out. I mean, we had Brain Maggot in the past, but turns out just putting Flying and Lifeling on that will make it so much better. And especially with Rafine, of course, when you go this cleared away and then Rafine on turn three is just absolutely insane. Yeah, the, the, the curve outs on the play are even more devastating, I feel like, with a card like this, because. Also here, you don't have Rafine like you do have an Esper Midrange, but you have some very, very powerful free drops. You have Gix, which works excellently with all these flying creatures and the Schooner as well, because, you know, a 3-4 is not easy to block on turn 3 attacking. So if you go Schooner into Gix, you'll likely get to draw a card there. And um, you also have the new Preacher, which I, 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 I think from what I've seen so far from Standard, I think this might be the best card. Out of Ixalan for standard. Just I overlooked it. I definitely overlooked it during a spoiler season. Uh, I guess the convoluted text on it and my, you know, I'm not a native English speaker, so that's my excuse here. I didn't really quite understand how this how this works. But as soon as I saw it in play, um, I think I, I played Explorer and someone cast it out of the Amalia deck, and I had like changed the equation, Dovin's Vido. And uh, temporary lockdown in hand, and I just couldn't deal with it for a couple of turns. Um, and it just kept drawing them cards. I was like, whoa. And then I realized that it does draw you a card and it makes you a vampire when you are tight on life. So it gives you both effects. Um, just absolutely insane. And then 2 4 Death Touch is great stats. It's, it sort of gives you Glissa vibes, um, but it might just be better than Glissa because 2 4 might be better than, than 3 3. Uh, in some circumstances, and um, yeah, it's also just black, so you can put in any black deck. This card is just needs to be killed right away, otherwise it starts making value in some way or another. Um, yeah, this insane card, very good with Shieldred as well. Um, just another, like, it's it's sort of like a mini Shieldred in a way, because if you don't kill this, I think you're going to lose most games of Magic, so that means they have to kill this, and then you know, this list by, by the way, Matt Tumor, Tumor, oh god, I'm butchering the name, Matt Tumorwich or something, Matt Tumorwich, I'm probably butchering the last name. Anyways, congrats to Matt who made second place in the standard challenge, I just copy pasted the list. And uh, yeah, you can tell, like, if they kill the Preacher of the Go for the Throat, you know, then there's all of a sudden room for Shieldred to, uh, yeah, span her wings or span her tentacles or whatever you want to call these things. Um... So that, that, in a way, is, is is good. Like, get the removal out with the Deep Cavern Bat, then play the Preacher, they have to kill that, and then you drop a Shield Red, and at that point, they don't have any removal left. So, yeah. Was a Restless Reef in the mana base? Just two copies, which is kind of interesting, but yeah, it comes down to the fact that you do want one drops uh, in your deck, and, and uh, Haplines are a bit weird with one drops. But nonetheless, this, this strikes me as weird initially, because this does seem like a pretty decent land. 4-4 Death Touch is, is kind of difficult to deal with. Um, so I, I don't know, I, I could see playing more than just two. 
All right, take a look at the sideboard real quick. This is a very balanced sideboard. The State of Stroke and the Shana is tight by now. Of course, those cards are for um, the big mana decks, like Itali decks, Itali Reanimator, and, and Atraxa stuff. Tishana's Tidebinder goes around Cavern of Souls, um, which has become a thing as well, counters the abilities and turns the creature into, you know, a 7-7 seven, seven and without any abilities. It's quite good against Atraxa, right? Like, just being able to fly over it and kill them anyways, and uh, going around Cavern of Souls there. So, I've seen lists with more Tidebinders. I guess Matt just decided that there's not much to worry about Cavern of Souls. There's not much, not, not, not much to worry about... Um, domain anyhow you also see that in just two copies of make this appear in the main deck which is on the low like uh, that used to be a four off in these type of decks in the past but i guess deep current that gives you some extra interaction in that regard and so maybe you don't need all these make disappears and if, if there's not much domain if there's not much big mana decks the card is also not that necessary lilian of the veil a flexible one good in like mirror mirror situations but also quite nice against big mana Gix Command against the aggro decks, cut down, more removal, always good to rest and negate, more interaction in that regard. And Anoint with Affliction, which can exile various creatures, um, also deals with Schooner and like Creature, which is not that easy to do in one card. Um, we'll get that with the next set and the card Last Goodbye, which destroys any creature. Like It has the same effect as Anoint with Affliction. Um, but it's also uncounterable, so it makes it slightly better in a non prediction I would say, because it goes around Ward. But yeah, this card is, is, has gotten a lot better in recent days, and maybe it's even main deckable, I would say, because, again, like, Preacher is big, Schooner is big, and Go Free Throw doesn't quite cut it against the Schooner, at least. Um, but yeah, I mean, here you have two big, good blockers against Schooner, so they have to remove the blocker first. And then they can attack into like a preacher or a shield red. Yeah, that helps a little bit. And you have your own stuff as well to race. All right. Well, demon mid range. It is. I think that's a good start to jump back into standard, play some with the new Ixalan cards, and also Call of Mana comes out sooner rather than later. So uh, yeah, getting a little update on standard going in, uh, is, is is probably good for myself if if I start playing standard with with the. Call off set. All right, guys, let's play some Demia mid range. Play first. Uh, no, thank you. All right, no early place is certainly not what I love, but we gotta do with what she, what we have, I guess. Back to standard. It's been a while. Restless Cottage. All right, there's my early play. So green black Mosswood Dread Knight is certainly a very very strong card. Okay, interesting. So I uh, can't take a bat. Yikes. <laughs> Remove a heavy hand. Mm. I guess I just take the virtue. So I don't want them to virtue this on turn two. It's like the most effective way they can deal with this. So, yeah. All right, they, I guess they take the go for the throat here. Yeah, I don't have that much grind ability. Like, this is not a deck with betting announcements and emperors and virtues of loyalties. I just sort of one for one the opponent. I have to. I have to get a good start going. Essentially, like you have to have schooner and stuff. Very draw some cards, I guess. Do you trade here? Opponent has way more removal than I do. I think I do attack. Offer the trade. They won't take it, which I think is reasonable. Yeah, not much of a choice there. Everybody's playing bats. It would be kind of nice to play something that punishes one time. Like uh, I guess Nightclubber comes to mind. Yeah, I mean this preacher won't live, fortunately. So I guess I will slow roll it. It's not much reason to play it, I think. I, I could maybe they kill the bat with the go for the throat. I 
probably just oh oh I clicked through that oops um, I wanted to air tie <clears throat> I wanted to air tie there end of turn on the bad that was uh, punt. And now I could play ferry. I could just use the go for the throat and the ferry. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna do this. This virtue might actually become a problem. The way this game is developing. Very slow, both players at a high life total. All right. A very unique thing that's kind of funny is the is the painland aspect with the preacher because again, if you're both on the same life total, you get both effects, which you know is preferred. So sometimes when you have painlands in play, you might actually manipulate your own life total by giving yourself damage to bring yourself down to your opponent's life. So to prevent the virtue from ever hitting the battlefield, I could go for the throat my own air time, which is obviously a pretty painful thing to do. I think I will not do that. Jungle Hollow, all right. A little bit of a budget version here. Okay, well. I will have something to sacrifice. And here we funnily enough have a situation where I can pain myself and make a make a vamp. It would mean that I won't be able to cast a four drop that I draw. But free vamp is free vamp, right? So it's pretty funny. Alright, well. Let's play that. Oh, okay, some heavy hitters. Uh, um, take the Terra Sunder, what's gonna happen to me? They're gonna play Anissa, make potentially a very big dude. If I take the Anissa, they can tear Sunder my Preacher, but that turns the entire turn into that. Hmm. All right. I think this is the scariest here. If they tear some of my preacher, I then have six damage coming across with the land. I have to mill for four, so it's actually a downside here. It's kind of funny. Okay. Yeah, it's a downside against the virtue, isn't it? Interesting. They can get air tie into play. Hmm. Oh well. Hmm. Yeah, this might be slipping away. Funnily enough, this go for the throat on my own creature would have... I mean, in the end, if, if if I would have done it on my own creature and... I don't know, like... Wouldn't necessarily have done what I wanted to do in the end. It's like, then they would have done something different this turn. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay. So now they only have bats and, and preacher. Bats, preacher, and this to get back. Okay. Play the turtle. Mill, a dread knight, and a glissa. Yeah, they got me, I think. They just got me. I think I'll attack with everybody. They might just block these two guys. I don't want them to double block, though. Yeah, they, their cards lined up very well against mine this game. 
This might just be a bad matchup for me, honestly. Like, I only present one threat at a time. Yogari has good answers for one threat at a time. It has some pretty annoying... Like, the Dread Knight seems very good in this matchup. And just virtue being more than just a removal spell is pretty, pretty huge here. Okay, opponent's getting aggressive before even drawing a card. Love it. Wow. Okay. Damn. Funnily enough, this puts me down to making vampires again, which I didn't think I would be able to this game, but now Preacher's making vampires again. Ah, uh, three lands off the top. Okay. And I could theoretically draw into a go for the throat, maybe. Ah, stupid. Now the auto tapper. I was a bit fast there. I needed to paint myself to get a vampire. That was, yeah. Hunt, I suppose. The auto tapper got me a little bit. Alright, another land. That will do it. GG, GG Golgari. Okay, I think I want annoying affliction for the for the draw uh, the, 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 the red noid. Liliana seems very good here. Um otherwise. Negate, maybe? Like, make this appear might just be worse than like a negate or something. What's bad? Like, what's actively bad? Gigs? Nah, I don't know. Chariot? Nothing's actively bad, I would say. I could play more removal. Good. The turtle, I guess. Turtle is a good make disappear target, isn't it? But I don't really know what to cut. Cut down hitting the bat, but otherwise nothing. Hmm. Yeah, hitting the bat is important though. I don't know, I'm, I'm, I just don't want to play counter spells. I think if they play a turtle turn 4, I am on the play right now, and if I have a decent draw, that's going to be a pretty bad play, I think. I really wish I had, you know, Spike Last Siren turn 1, Schooner, you know. Schooner turn, turn 2 would be excellent. Mmm, so sad, so sad. Like now, this is the type of draw that just could easily get dismantled because they just kill the preacher and then I have all these reactive cards, you know. Not very good. Could they kept the one lander? Mm. Nah, it's, yeah, it's not very recommendable at all. Um. <clears throat> We get both modes, it's just absurd. They have cut down here. Um just play another preacher, right? If they draw the land, they can go for the throw this, but then they stare down another preacher. Yeah. Alright. Alrighty. Okay, we're on a draw now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. On a draw, it's a little bit more. It's it's a little harder to deploy this fast draw. So I could see myself bringing in some counter spells over like a siren, for example. Gigs, siren, schooner. They all become worse on a draw. Mm -hmm. I also wonder how good this is. It's a pretty flexible card. Deals with the turtle. Um, schooner, 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 schooner. Schooner seems quite annoying. Just a difficult thing to deal with. Uh, 
Um, let a couple make this piece on the draw. I'll I'll do things lightly for now. Not really like I don't know much about the format or this deck and how you like can sideboard. You could yeah, no. could be a bit more aggressive, but I'm just gonna do a little bit do a little bit here and there. Just don't mix don't don't mess something up that's already like good. All right. Hmm. Yeah, this is, this is a good one. So is Fairy Mastermind, though. Excellent two drop. Huh. Interesting. Um. I mean. Do I want to play the Fairy here? If I play Fairy, they have to take Lily. Then I can still play Preacher, which is kind of funny. All right. Okay, I think I'll do that. They have to take Lily now. The only reasonable option. Um. Yeah. Which means I can play Preacher nonetheless. They missed the land drop yet again. Uh, I could attack. I don't think I want to attack though. I have double go for the throat. I don't want to trade with the bat. And this, okay. Double rest. Would be good here. Ah, it's just a cut down, okay. And now the preacher lives yet again. Oh wow, they put me down to 19. That makes them have a higher loft total than me. That, that, that means I only get a vamp, right? Okay. Uh, let's attack, I guess. I could activate Takanuma here, theoretically. Hmm. Probably a fine idea to do that. Although I do want to start drawing cards. If they hit me again, they go to 19 and I'm at 18. Hmm. But Preacher might just die this turn. Interesting spot. Uh, I'll just go with this. Okay. The attack, I'm gonna kill it. Yeah. I mean, I, I'll kill it anyway. <laughs> no matter what happens here. If they attack or not. Alright. Yeah, let's just play Lily. I'm not going to play the Siren quite yet, I think, because I could draw like a Fairy Mastermind or something. Which would be quite nice against like a Dread Knight. I'm going to play the Siren and I will put a counter on the Siren, I think. Sure. Yeah, I mean, these two games have been non-games, unfortunately, upon just not playing Magic. Um... This is, yeah, this is just sad a little bit. Sorry for them. It will play it out, uh, apparently. Sure. I don't see much reason to activate Lily there. Like, my opponent has seven cards in that. This, uh, you could do it. it just both of my cards are good, so it's like, yeah, okay. <clears throat> right. Decent showing. I mean, the cards are just very good. This deck plays how it is supposed to be in in a mid range deck, right? And preacher, yeah, you just can't let anyone run away with this card. It is brutal. It is absolutely brutal. Alrighty, oh, Gunnar removal, five lands. We technically have a way to recruit. Through the schooner, but yeah, the rake's not the best way to do that. Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna try better. Like, oh, I'm on. Yeah, this is much better. Um, yeah. Oh, it would be a very nice seven card hand. Can I not keep them all? 
Uh, I'm on the draw, so I just put away the shield root, maybe. Hmm. Maybe the spyglass, sorry. Hmm. Yeah, I think I like that. I like that best. <clears throat> Mountain, okay. Ooh, all right. Doing that. All right. I just pass for now. What two drops? Felden. Kumano, the scary one. I think I'm just gonna kill that. Don't tell me you have like monstrous rage. That would have been so brutal. <laughs> yeah. Okay, looks like they have like a play with fire. This probably is a good matchup. I mean, I'm playing two colors. I have three shield in my main deck. Cheap removal. Preacher seems pretty annoying for them. Got rake. Godric has a 4-4, and I don't have a play next turn. Ugh. Go for the throat, yes. No, not Underground River. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this game, I imagine I would have been on the play. I would have dropped the shield right here. Things would have been slightly easier. All right, yeah, sure. Pump the Godric. I don't I don't even have the effort put into to to you know bluff a stop shield with you way too slow. GG. Alright, cool. <clears throat> yeah, miss miss a beat, I guess, and you get ranched by this mono red deck. This is certainly uh, a powerful deck I think. Mono red has been winning challenges at least. Left and right on Magic Online. And I I mean I had I had I had to cut down into bat. I missed my free drop, but I had one drop, two drop, and I just can't completely toast it. I guess bad is pretty weak against cheap one mana spells, so that there's that. It's not a very good two drop against like a burn deck. It's pretty bad actually. It can be good if it lives and you have like a Rafine or like map tokens you can pop on it, but otherwise pretty bad. Okay, I think Gix is bad. Runs to the lightning strike. Cut down Liliana. Gix is command is good too. Uh make this peer go go. Um, that time, probably a necessary evil. Uh, I have too many cards, huh? What good's Liliana after all? I think on the play she's kind of fine. Like Mono Red does play lots of creatures, and they don't play. Okay, let me get, get my door real quick. All right, here am I back, and it was just my girlfriend who forgot her keys. So, uh, let's... what do we do? Schooner, maybe? Hmm. I feel like it's like Siren or Schooner. Maybe a couple of Sirens. All these two mana cards seem pretty weak against the Burn spells. Schooner does not, to be fair. Maybe the Fairy is not great. Just play a couple of Sirens. Fairy just trades with a one mana Burn spell. The upside isn't really there. They don't draw cards. Fairy is not particularly good in this matchup, and yeah, it's just, it's just like a 2-1 flyer, pretty much. Which, that is not very... It's not terrible, but it's also not at all impressive. And the Siren, at least, um, is a 1-drop, so it, it trades equally if they want to kill it, and gives you some extra value, so it's a bit better against the removal spells they have. Mono Red could be a deck that plays effects that deal 1 damage as well, right? I don't know. So, yeah, like there's no goblin chain with I guess these days. Mm, I think I'm rather cracking the map than holding up a removal. Because if they have like a Felden here, I I would not be happy because then I wouldn't even be able to cut down, so I'd be happy, yeah. Felden or like an adversary, sure. I'm kinda getting toasted again, huh? Is this matchup just not good? All right, this seems fine. Okay, let's attack. All right. I guess drawing go for the float helps too. It's pretty important here. Now you have Godric. Yeah. All right. Okay. Looking fine. Going to 13 here. Gotta cut down. 
I don't really have a plan though. Like I might like this draw could easily be outgrinded by you know, a couple burn spells, another adversary or something like that. Do I take more damage? What am I afraid of? I think I just kill it. Just preserve life total. I could I could have kept it up for I don't know what, like a cough or something random, but I wouldn't I, like nothing like it's some four four dragon, I guess. God like, yeah. That's problematic for sure. Okay. All right, um, how aggressive do I want to play this? Do I want to attack here? Probably not. Do I want to attack here? Hmm. This might just get flying. I think I'm just going to attack the Atai. Funnily enough, I could have kept this up. So in case I want to damage myself, very unlikely in this scenario, but in other scenarios, it might be correct to keep this up. Like ping yourself end of turn, untap, ping again to again get onto the same life total, you know? Oh, that's interesting. What's this about? Ooh, I did not think about that. Oh no, Anna. The Witch Stalker Frenzy, yeah. I mean, here you can just tell my inexperience with this format. If I would have played more standard and, like, I'm never going to do this mistake again, hopefully, <laughs> I would kill the, fa the Foundry, uh, you know, before they get to attack, of course. Okay, that was pretty That was pretty bad. That was, that was a moment of uh, where I could really punish them for the line they took, and, uh, yeah, <laughs> I did not. I forgot, I forgot about the Frenzy. Uh, it's been a while, it's been a while. Um, so I could attack them for 8. And I'm at 10 life. I could also attack them for 7, put them to 8, but then that's not lethal. 10, I'm at 10, I'm at 10. Uh, should be fine. They have Bloodthirsty Adversary, it's 9 damage. No, 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 they don't. They don't have lightning strikes. So. Hmm. Yeah, that was unfortunate. That was rather unfortunate. He had red deck as frenzy, which very nice against you know, two four into four five. I I could easily see this being a tough matchup for this blue black deck. Honestly, like there's not many very good effects here that they have. Just cheap removal and creatures. But burn can 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 grind through that. Nothing they cannot trade with. Nothing they cannot kill. Oh, okay. Has a play with fire, maybe. Another land. Come on. Brutal. Yeah, I mean, there's no Rafine. You really need your creature, like there's Geeks, which is also card selection in a way, but I, I bought it out because I think it's bad in this matchup. Ay, ay, ay. I don't know, Steamia deck is maybe just too fair, huh? Hmm. Too fair, N not enough. Super powerful plays. They have removal for my for my siren. They have maybe the trample spell. Lightning strike. Blocker. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Happens, I guess. Okie dokie. Let's go. Let's do this. Rich. All right. Let's see. 
So far, I mean, this is the third match I'm playing with this deck, but so far this deck has felt a little bit too fair. <laughs> it plays a lot of very powerful cards, but yeah, that is, that is a powerful format. There's a Cavern of Swords, so I assume we're playing against Dinosaur Ramp. It is on Dinosaur indeed, yeah. So they have Carnosaur and Itali and like Cruelty of Gix and Big Score and Red Removal Spells. Um, this fairy is pretty good against the Preacher, huh? It's kind of funny. Yeah, but I'll just kill it. They do only get a 1-1 one -one right now. Play my own fairy. Put on the pressure. Play my own preacher. They get 1-1. One -one. They kill my preacher. Hmm. But that's just... I'm worried about Shieldred. I don't know how many Shieldreds these decks play. Shieldred really get me here. Interesting spot. Hmm. Yeah, and that's the that's the thing. Like you you have this one go for the throat, your opponent plays a preacher, and you know that they could just play a turn four Shieldred. So I could just trade here. Ah, uh, that's probably not a good idea. Um, okay. It's a cut down target. So I could go down to 17, but it doesn't do me good. All right. Well, just attack with everybody. I guess I could have popped the crap, the, the clue first. The clue, I'm saying, the map. All right, a schoonerino. Yeah, they go for the double. Oh, they go for the jump. Okay. My preacher is a lot better than theirs. Mine just draws cards. Yours makes you one ones. So I like this. Um, they missed the land drop. <clears throat> just play Schoonerino. And pass. Hmm. I'm likely going to kill one of these, am I not? Yeah, I should just... Probably this was a wrong ordering. I should have. Oh, I keep that. I should do this first and then think about playing Schooner or not. Because I, I really want to kill this because otherwise they kill my fairy, which I think is what they're going to do. So I want to kill this anyways in my turn. And then I'm. Yeah. Should have. I, I could have dealt one more damage essentially here. Could have thought about this a little bit more. Man, this vampire looks <laughs> unhappy, to say the least. More fairies. I hope there's no Brotherhood and coming. That would. Uh, I guess my opponent cannot cast it right now. Uh, Brotherhood's end would be a bit of a blowout. I did not play around that card here, which I could have. Interesting. Yeah, it's probably good enough. It's quite bad if they have exactly Red Land, Brotherhood's End. They also keep chomping with these vampires pretty aggressively. Ugh, don't do it to me. Sack the blood. Oh man, if they have Brotherhood's End. I think these decks play Brotherhood's End too. Cruelty gone, alright. Don't do it to me, no! They have it here, I'm so dead. All right. Maybe they have it, maybe they don't, but I think if they had it, they wouldn't attack first because they attack first, they make a 1-1, one, one, and then, you know. Okay, yeah, and they give up. They make this appears too much on top. Whew, okay. Well, sort of a bit of a sweat there. I mean, yeah. Schooner doesn't get blown up, but all of these get blown up is pretty rough. I don't know. I, like, depends on how many Brotherhoods and these decks play. Uh, it was correct or it wasn't to do this. What I did, what I did there. Yeah, I'm not sure. Like applying pressure is important too. So, it's an argument for playing your fairy there. Okay. So they have Cavern. So I probably want the Tishana. Daliana seems good. Um. I think cut down. Maybe not. 
stroke counters stroke counters the you know the thing the cruelty it, it doesn't it, it doesn't go i mean it's yeah and and big score i guess i'm not really sure exactly how these lists look to be honest with you so i have five cards here and i need to cut some more what do i cut gigs on the draw again maybe one and then two siren or something Gix is pretty bad against Brotherhood's end for what it's worth. Just in general, it seems like a bit tough to deploy. I really, I do want to give it. Honestly, I'm I'm just a, I'm just a Gix hater all around. So like, <laughs> I always find reasons to cut it. <clears throat> but other people like it very much. And yeah, I mean, in this deck with, with, the, with the Siren and with the Bat and with the Fairy, you have 12 evasive creatures and even a Schooner in a way is evasive because like, who's blocking a 3-4 on turn 3? Um, but yeah, on the draw, I mean, usually it's also just, just way more difficult to deploy and to, to like facilitate this, this sort of attacking kind of stuff. All right. <clears throat> No more fables to worry about. Those times are long over. But yeah, the, t the trauma is deep. The trauma sits deep. So, Phyrexian, okay. So we have, what do we have? Phyrexian, so we have children, I guess. Okay, they don't have black mana up. So I can just play my gigs here and they don't. They, yes, they could have a braid. Did my internet die? What's going on here? My internet seems fine. I took the lily. Why didn't I play the shores last turn? That was a mistake. Oh, they do have a braid. Not bad. That's a pretty good turn. Pretty good turn for you. Bad. Okay. Take the go for the throat. My hand is pretty bad proof. Yeah. That's high, so I don't really care. Like, if they have shielded here, just air tie it. Or, or air tie this. But I think just putting on the shielded is fine too. Although, I guess. Apparently, they don't have anything. Like, the point against the shielded would be that they would have likely taken it with the bat if they didn't have you know, an answer, but maybe they were just hoping I wouldn't deploy it. Play a little bit more passive. Yeah, I mean, now they're just getting destroyed by children. I guess that, that is what the stack is trying to accomplish. Play powerful free drops, have them be killed or not, and then win. And, uh, then if they're killed, you just deploy children. All right, interesting. So you just drew it, right? Like, there's no other explanation because I was tapped out the turn before. So they just drew go for the throat, making this game a little bit more interesting. Unfortunately for me, but I have good cards left. So. And I have the board advantage, the mana advantage. They need, they need removal here, cheap removal. If they have that, they might be fine. I think I'm going to not play the bat. I think my opponent has an instant speed removal. If I play the the bat, the fairy, I mean, sorry. Sorry for all the fairies out there. I didn't want to miss miss I don't even know. How do you miss species you? Um, Yeah, I think I'm just going to... Yeah, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to... Ooh, interesting. No, no big boy in the grave. Hmm. I think I'm going to play a little chill here, though. I'm just going to do this, crew. So now they might have a removal, right? But they sort of, yeah. They couldn't kill my fairy end of turn, at least. Like, whatever. Like, if they kill Schooner, I'm sort of okay with that. It looks like they kill Schooner. Okay, yeah. I mean, if they have Brotherhood's end now, it would be a bit annoying. I really hope I would hit a land here. If not. Yeah, Brotherhood's End would be annoying. Hmm. I could have played Shieldred instead. Playing around Brotherhood's End better. 
Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, learning, learning by doing, I guess. I mean, I, I can just hope they don't have an answer for this. And this, this does the home run here. All right. It did. Lucky me. Hmm. But yeah, I mean, besides like a burn down the house, which I think is more unlikely than a Brotherhood's End. If I just play Shieldred on the last turn, crew the schooner, attack, can't do much. I think my play of not playing the ferry was still good. I think that was fine. Um, if I would have known I drew a Shieldred, I would play the ferry end of turn. Like, with that information, I, I would. But I did not know that, so I wanted to like slow roll a little bit and keep, keep open my options. Okay, this is the curve they're talking about, huh? Just Fozzie's missing, really. <laughs> seed core. Oh, damn. All right. That's going to be a tricky one. Seed core. Is this a uh, toxic deck? I mean, it is. But which version, I guess, is the question. I've heard there's some, like, combo band versions. Um, let's I'll play Schooner. Yeah. This is probably going to be a tough one. Um, it's a good start here as well. Turn one chorus, turn two hive. We'll see, we'll see. Jawbone. Play Preacher. And don't attack. <laughs> Skrelf. Can't kill that. Yeah, I only have two Gixxus command, no Glistening Deluge or Path of Peril. So the sideboard doesn't have much, sadly. <laughs> okay, so we're both on the same life, so that is nice. Um, the Skrelf will be annoying, but I can't do nothing about it. I could try to luck a little bit and play the bad and hope to explore into a land. Maybe I have to be lucky here. But I also kind of want the blocker. I'm also going to draw a card here so I could just get that thing. All right, I think I'm just going to attack the preacher. All right, there's a land. It's a tap one, sadly. That's okay. They really want a aggressive block. Okay. Just play the bat, right? Uh, all of these cards, I mean, none of them can be cast here. I mean, that's good for me. I guess I'll take the charge. Seems better than, like, Fading Hope. Yeah, but this is tough. Like, they can just... Uh, yeah, I don't think I'll be able to kill them fast enough here. Like, Shieldred life gain does nothing. <laughs> this is tough. Two blockers... And I can just poison move this. Okay. Interesting. I guess what they can do here, which is kind of neat, they can let the first strike resolve, then the seed core is enabled and can kill my vampire. But yeah, there's not much I can do, so... If I had an untapped land here, I could have go for the throw to this, which would have been a pretty big blowout. So the tap land here cost me a lot. And now they can now they can protect their might over there. No. Which they will do, I assume. Yep. I guess I guess the block wasn't so aggressive because you do want to have less life, maybe. So I don't Draw cards. Seven poison already. How the frick happened? Like, how did that happen so quick? Hmm. All right. I feel like I don't have many options. 
I could keep up the go for the throat. I could use it right away. I think I just keep it up. I have three blockers. Schooner can go on Duelist. The other three can go on the other stuff. The other two, I mean. I have to do this. Creature is so good. It's like it's also good in these matchups. Like it's good in aggressive matchups, making me a one-one every turn. It's so good. The, the the stats are so annoying. It's just like Chromo Seed Shark two four on a free drop is kind of good. It's good against red decks. I'm just going to kill everything. I mean, I, I won't be able to. They can eat the vampire. But I, I, I cannot take more poison at all. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay. Hmm. So they have two attackers essentially. Um, it's also quite good to make this a beyond makes one ones. How aggressive do I want to get? I guess I play Shieldred for sure. And then that's it. Just attack with the preacher. No, 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 no. I can attack with this as well. So I get I get the one one blocker here. I have a shield to block with. I have to make this appear up. It certainly helps that my opponent is so, sort of like on a mulligan to four right now. I think if they wouldn't be, if they would be able to cast these cards, I would be in trouble. It's also, I mean, you're playing Murex and Seed Core with like blue spells, your mana is probably not that good. <clears throat> but yeah, that's I guess one downside of this of this of this toxic deck. But there's probably plenty upsides too. Seventeen life. Oof. Will I be able to get them? Whoa! What is this attack? Wait, that does not make any sense at all. Did they just suicide two two mites for life? Wouldn't you just give unblockable to one and attack me for one? That doesn't seem very good. Alright. That was good for me. Still at 7 poison. Okay. So now we have equal life total. I love that. So we get a vampire. Um, yeah. Just... Oh, we have geeks as well, right? So the geeks first. Um, let's do like this. None of these can block. Don't want to crew gigs. I will get one vampire which I can chomp this with. Mm. Nah, I think I'll just crew here. Keep keep another blocker. For good measure. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, I'm hundred percent killing the Skrelf. Wow. Looks like I'm winning big time now. I could still. I don't know. Well, I don't think I can lose at this point. Really. I guess I before I kill Skrelf, I should have drawn these cards. I I kind of forgot about Geeks there. Played so few games with Geeks. In my life. Right, opponent down to nine. I mean, they're just super dead next turn. They have to deal me free poison. Okay, that's it. GG. 
Mana Troubles decided this one for sure. If they if if they would have had blue mana earlier in the game, this this would have been gone differently, of course. Fighting uh, to the bitter end. They only have one blocker and that's seven. I guess they go up to 10. And here they can gain one more, so 11. No, they can gain three more, I guess. It's up to 13. Is it not done yet, huh? They have Restless Reef. They block the Shieldred. Crew here. Uh, they had 13 life, essentially. So that's 4, 5, 9, 12 damage. They had 13. But they die to two more damage in the upkeep. All right, cool. <clears throat> I'm going to mill for good measure. It's also nice um, how this is automatically stacked. This is exactly how I want to stack this. I want to explore first and then I want to draw so I can manipulate the top of my library and like I can I can look for a card that I want to draw essentially like if it's a removal spell I can keep it if I want it or so, and such all right yeah this should be enough right five seven nine twelve and then they take two in the upkeep yep <clears throat> yeah I mean scroll scroll scythe lets you live for, for a long time. The life gain, but the opponent realizes the shield red. Okay, wow. We won game one. That is I think that's unlikely to happen. Like game one has to be pretty difficult. Okay, cool. Um definitely cut down. And the Gix's command. Yeah. What else? Uh not much, I guess. These removals are I mean Go for the throat, probably worse than annoyed with affliction, I guess. But yeah, you probably want some go for the throats anyways. Uh, make this appears pretty bad, I think. Mastermind's terrible. <laughs> Maybe the res. Just take the scroll of scythe. I think that's that's a good idea. Taking the scroll of scythe seems pretty important. Schooner was a decent blocker this game. Hmm. Hmm. I really don't like all, like some of these two drops, though. No. They seem pretty medium. Could also play more go for the throat. Not really sure. I mean, they have Duelist and this guy, but this guy doesn't die to go for the throat. Hmm. Hmm. Do they have any draw? Not really, right? Nah. Um, I'm gonna cut the schooner. Schooner was kind of decent there. Maybe, maybe, maybe I play one schooner there. Maybe, maybe one schooner. What about the tide binder? Shuts off, shuts off. Um, Grelf, I guess. Potentially, maybe it's not that bad. Little gigs. Yeah, the schooner. I, I can, I can just see how the game goes, especially on a draw where like. I have to react with my opponent. I can't play the schooner and then also have another creature. If I have the best curve with Siren into schooner, sure, I'm going to be okay. Um, but if I just have like a normal curve, we have like cut downs and go for the throats and schooner. The schooner doesn't seem that appealing there because schooner is a proactive card. Like if I am on the play, if I am ahead on board, like more likely, then schooner is better. But if I'm like playing from behind a little bit and I have to really answer the opponent's creatures on time, which I have to in this matchup, then Schooner doesn't seem that good. Oh, I made a mistake. Could have used Mirex there. Didn't think. Yeah, I, I saw it too late. <laughs> Hasty play. I could have been at 20 here. Play Mirex into Swamp into Marsh. Would have been better. All right. <clears throat> I guess. Yes, this is the matchup, though, where my life total matters the least. So uh, not not too bad of a mistake to make here, I guess. I really see the Siren with Rathbeam. That just seems like an obvious combo. 
But of course, free color deck, uh, it's a bit tough, I guess, with one drops. Although we did have Mardu vehicles in the past running like free colors and being aggressive. Um, with one drops, of course. So maybe we can do, uh, and, and we do have Esper Legends as well, although they have Plaza of Heroes, which doesn't cast Spyglass Saren, and Plaza of Heroes is obviously pretty insane for the consistency of Esper Legends, allowing you to play so many colors in your aggressive deck. Chorus will connect, I suppose. Skrelf sitting back, interesting. The Giz Command, not that great with some of these creatures. Maybe I'll just block the Chorus, honestly. Uh, let's see. Kixx's command just blowing up everything I have. Kind of funny. Alright, what do you got? Three cards left. Just a fading off. Okay. Could have bounced my bat there. But I guess that's not very, very good. Um, Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to block the cars. I really don't... I, I, I would like to avoid them to get this ability. Yeah. Like they, their draw seems very medium here. Could they give unblockable even? All right. No, they don't. Okay. I just want to buy time. Any time, I can get. I'm gonna attack with the bat though. I want it to be at a higher life total. And now I have a blocker anyways, so. It doesn't look good for my opponent. They're gonna use the, the Skrelf. Sure. Paying life because they wanna activate Merex. I'd love for this preacher here to go up to free toughness. Well, free power, I mean. Let's try to let's try to accomplish that. I could have attacked first in case I dropped four drop two. Still unlucky. Alright. Um hmm. Yeah. So I won't get vampires. Makes me sad. Um, but I will draw cards, I guess. Also good. Okay, that's a lot of land. <clears throat> all right, all right, all right. Maybe I should have stayed back with the bat because I'm Gixxus commanding anyways. Like losing it anyways, likely. Hmm. Interesting. I'm just gonna throw that out there and trade. I feel like when you have Preacher going, you can just be very reckless with your resources. Okay. Sure. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> Bit of a weird line, I think might be fine here. Play shield red down to 14 and attack just with this yeah. cool Mm-hmm. 
So I have three blockers. I'm at five poison. And now I have like really good clock on the board. So this Gix command might just seal the deal. They don't have any life gain. They're 10 already. They also don't really know what they're doing, huh? I don't know, like, these plays are weird. I'll just do this, like... Like, are you happy trading two mites for a vampire? I don't think so. Like, if you do this, just attack one mite. Oh, it also gets extra poison, so it's two poison. I kind of forgot about that. Danger. And the Mercs is kind of annoying, not gonna lie. Hmm. Interesting. So if I... Maybe I made a mistake here. Maybe I should have attacked with this last turn. There would be a 9. Then I could Gix's command, put two counters here. Destroy everything with two power. And then... I mean, I could still force lethal here, theoretically. By just pumping my team and killing something over there. Could also activate Restless Reef. Interesting. It's a weird use of Geeks' command in this matchup. I, I I think these two modes rarely have been used together, but they need something, otherwise they're dead. And if they have something, they likely won't be able to activate Mirax, and they lose the might here, so they're down to one Skrell, and then I will be able to kill them next turn. Do I actually pump this? What if they bounce that and bounce this? Yeah, I think it's okay. <clears throat> a bit of an unfortunate game. I mean, six lands drawn is a lot. They could have the two mana bounce that gives me a, a counter, but even then, a toxic counter. Oh, much! Wow. Okay, March is pretty strong with the the one two. But yeah, I mean, this situation leaves them in a similar spot, and they just still die to an attack here. Now I even have Restless Reef. So they block one, take nine. Now Restless Reef seems good. Just having that four power attacker to finish games with is, is pretty good. Especially in, in like this deck that sort of chips in damage. So I could see going up to three copies. Yeah, Tapland, not great, but Manland, really great. So, you know, the, the downside is it's worth the upside, I would say. Like Green Black, for example, also plays Cut Down and Duress sometimes, you know, as, as, as one drops, and they I think they just all, all play for Cottage without a question, right? This deck probably should also like consider at least consider playing three, maybe even four. Oh did not think about that. Sure. Alright, that's fair. So those trade now. S nothing I can do about that. But the situation for my opponent is still grim. Um, do I just kill this now? Do I need to? They need to like chain proliferate spells. I think that's the only way. I'm just gonna kill it now to like not, I don't know. So if they have <clears throat> three auguries, right? Augury into augury into augury. That's the two mana anticipate that proliferates. I would be dead here. Alright, it's a planes, and that is game!
Okie dokie. Yeah. This DM deck is like feels pretty bread and butter, you know, like can't really go wrong with it. It sort of reminds me a little bit of um Reactor's mid-range in Pioneer slash Explorer. Um just all the best cards. Um <clears throat> you know, black has just some really good staples. And I guess you can you can pair it with anything really, right? Like that's most of these standard decks are just black with a support color. Black with green, black with red, black with blue. And here's the black and blue version. Um, and I guess, yeah, what, what comes to my mind, what is interesting to figure out is like, which of these black decks is best in that environment where midrange is so dominating? Um, and where you also always have to keep in mind a deck like Domain, of course, and also decks like Toxic and Mono Red. Um, so all in all, standard seems... Like, it's a pretty healthy space right now. Like, there's a bit of everything. Mid-range, this, this mid-range clump makes up a, a lot of decks. But in that mid-range clump, not like with Fable before, uh, it, it doesn't seem obvious which of the mid-range decks is best. Is it Esper? Is it Gogari? Is it Blue Black? Um, and yeah, when we had Fable back then, it was just Grixis. And I guess Red Black in the end, too, which were just a clear... You couldn't do any other mid-range stuff uh, besides those two. So yeah, very interesting, very interesting. All right, cool. I had some fun for sure. The gameplay is nice. The Preacher seems wow, insanely good. Um, just outstanding. Maybe even Explorer playable, honestly. Like, I've seen an Explorer already. I've seen lists uh, that run it in red-black. And yeah, honestly, like this card is a house and I could see it being good there too. Quite nice against uh, Phoenix when they have the Lightning Axe it. And, you know, then you drop the Shieldred on the next turn and they don't have the Lightning Axe anymore. And, yeah. Anyways, I digress. All right. Thank you so much for watching, as always. And I'll see you next time.